Antonio starts right now. A look outside, a chilly and windy morning, but plenty of sunshine later today. Sarah's here to explain. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock on Sunday, February 4th. Sarah, we're seeing a lot of changes these days, but the wind is the big factor today. That's exactly right. We right now winds are fairly calm, but they are going to pick up quite a bit later on this morning. It's chilly outside with temperatures generally in the low 50s, 51 in San Antonio, 51 at Rio Medina, 53 in Comfort and 56 in Pleasanton. But today it's all going to be about the wind. Winds are going to be sustained at 20 to 30 30 miles per hour from the northwest, but we will see a few gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour, particularly from the late morning through the early afternoon. Otherwise, it is going to be a beautiful day. We'll be looking at a high right near 70 degrees this afternoon and quickly cooling this evening. Coming up in the forecast, I'm going to walk you through uh, when gusts are going to pick up in your neighborhood, and we'll also take a look at the red flag warning that is in effect for some of our KSAP viewers. Details coming Thank you, Sarah. No, new this morning, San Antonio police searching for the gunman involved in an overnight shooting at a motel on the west side. It happened just after 3 a.m. on Military Drive West near Highway 90. Police tell us two men got into a fight in a parking lot and at some point shots were fired. One of the men was hit twice and rushed to the hospital. The other man took off. Also overnight, a man is dead following a fiery crash on the north side of town. It happened around 2.30 a.m. on Briarcliff Drive near Lock Hill Selma Road. Police tell us the man lost control and crashed into the fence of a home. The vehicle caught fire and crews found the man underneath the vehicle. EMS tried to help him, but he died at the scene. Governor Greg Abbott and about a dozen other Republican governors will be in Eagle Pass today. They're expected to get a briefing on border security. As our Daniela Ibarra explains, some people who call the border town home say the governors are not welcome. This has become the battleground for the state and the feds. Right now, Eagle Pass police have the entrance to Shelby Park blocked off. They're not allowing Border Patrol in right now or any federal agencies. People here in Eagle Pass say they want the state to give control back to the city. Shelby Park has been a hot spot for migrant crossings. In December, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol processed thousands of men, women and children here. Texas has stayed firm on what they say is holding the line with several Republican governors backing Abbott. Eagle Pass resident Juanita Martinez says she wants positive change. We need our park back. I want Governor Greg Abbott to get the hell out of our community. Bottom line, get the hell out of our town. Before the gubernatorial visit, people here in Eagle Pass are planning a prayer walk in protest. We're also expecting to hear from several Democratic congressional leaders who are pushing back against Abbott. And of course, we'll wrap up this whole visit for you in Eagle Pass. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. And we will be following that on KSAT.com. Now, a license in limbo. The city gave one salvage yard on the southwest side a warning that their license to recycle could be revoked. This comes after multiple code violations and neighbor safety concerns. Avery Everett has been following this story and shows us what's next for Monterey Iron and Metal. An operation in full steam. Even with its license on the line. After more than a century in San Antonio, Monterey Iron and Metals license to recycle could soon be revoked by the city. I confirmed this with a spokesperson for the city's development services department this week. Multiple code violations were cited to be the reason why this license is now in question. The city says it sent a letter giving Monterey 30 days to appeal in front of council before that license would be lost. Even on a Saturday, Monterey Iron is on the move. Take a look right behind me. You can see some of those cranes actively working and a spokesperson for the company says they're also working behind the scenes, getting ready to appeal. That spokesperson sent a statement over email to me that read in part, despite concerted efforts to operate our company responsibly, ethically and safely, the city is threatening to revoke our license. Later in that email, it also said, quote, we remain committed to working with city officials to resolve any issues so that we may continue to serve the community as we have for the past century. But this isn't the first time we've told you about safety concerns surrounding Monterey. Back in November, neighbors held a community meeting calling for help from city and state leaders. It's important that we don't have to worry about fires and smoke and dust 
and, and whatever else is coming off the salad jar. Since that meeting, these neighbors have been collecting testimonials. They're calling for Monterey to change its practices. They say learning this license is in limbo is a step, but it's not yet a solution. I can't say that it's a sigh of relief because we're not at the end yet. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a breath. Neighbors say they're working to meet with council members to talk about their concerns before Monterey appeals. All we want them to do is be good neighbors, comply with the rules and regulations. But as the clock ticks down, Monterey says it's also working with the city to keep their operations up in full swing. In that statement, Monterey says over the last couple of months, they've worked on installing new concrete and new fencing. Now for neighbors over the next couple of weeks, they're planning on having another meeting. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, wildfires raging in Chile have claimed at least 46 lives and destroyed 1,100 homes. The president of Chile says the death toll could worsen as four large fires burn in the region of Valparaíso. Authorities have urged thousands of people to evacuate their homes. About 92 forest fires are burning in the center and south of the country, where temperatures have been unusually high this week. Now to the Middle East and the new round of U.S.-led airstrikes on dozens of targets aimed at Houthi militants who have attacked U.S. warships and commercial vessels in the Red Sea. ABC's Marcus Moore has the latest. Overnight, coalition forces striking Houthi targets in Yemen. The U.S. and United Kingdom launching strikes against 36 Houthi targets over 13 locations. With support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada, Denmark, the Netherlands, and New Zealand. The latest strikes launched by warships and fighter jets seen here being loaded with missiles. The nation citing the Houthis' continued threat to global trade and freedom of navigation as their justification for their use of force, saying their aim is to de-escalate tensions and restore stability in the Red Sea. The coalition releasing a statement saying, quote, we will not hesitate to continue to defend lives and the free flow of commerce. This as casualty numbers continue to rise from Friday's strikes. In Iraq, 16 killed, 25 wounded, and in Syria, 29 killed. Iraq and Syria both condemning the U.S. response to a deadly drone attack that killed three American service members, as Iraq now declares three days of mourning for the victims of the U.S. airstrikes. This, as President Biden repeatedly has said, he wants to avoid a larger regional conflict. I don't think we need a wider war in the Middle East. That's not what I'm looking for. Meanwhile, the Lebanon-based militant group Hezbollah calling the U.S. strikes, quote, a blatant violation of the sovereignty of the two countries, an attack on their security and territorial integrity, and a shameless violation of all international and humanitarian laws. There's been a strong reaction coming in with many people fearing the airstrikes will threaten stability in the region. And while U.S. officials stress that they are trying to de-escalate the situation, many here in the Middle East fear just the opposite might happen. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Etura, Jordan. There's no question Stanley and other brands of travel tumblers are the it thing to have right now with a selection of many different colors and keeping 40 ounces of liquid cold. Now they're grabbing people's attention for fears of containing lead. In recent days, people have made videos on social media about Stanley Cups containing lead after doing lead tests at home. Now, a spokesperson for Stanley acknowledges that the material used to seal the vacuum insulation at the base of the cups does contain some lead, but says, quote, once sealed, this area is covered with a durable stainless steel layer, making it inaccessible to consumers, end quote. If you are using these cups correctly and they are not broken in terms of their sealant, I don't think you need to be terribly concerned. So I do want to encourage people to put this in context for their overall health, not just to be fearful of the potential lead exposure alone. It's rare for the base of a cup to come off exposing the seal, but if that does happen, Stanley says the cup is eligible for replacement under the lifetime warranty. Their seven game homestand came to an end of falling short to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, even though they lost, it was a great night for Wimby. He finished the night with another double double, 19 points and 10 rebounds. Devin Vassell, led the way for the Spurs shooters with 22 points, and Zach Collins was ejected at the end of the game after a fight with a Cavs player. In the end, the Spurs fall short, 117-101,
at the AT&T Center. Now the Spurs will start their nine game rodeo road trip on Wednesday in Miami. And you know what that means? It's time for all the rodeo dirt to fill the Frostbank Center. It will change from the home of the Spurs to the home of the rodeo. That's happening tomorrow morning and we will be there for the action. And right now on KSAT.com, we have all the information you need to know about this year's rodeo, which starts this Thursday and ends Sunday, February 25th. If you're looking to save money, there are deals that you can grab. Just head to our website to get a look at where and how you can be budget friendly at this year's rodeo. Time now, 8, 10, 52 degrees outside. Let's take a look. It's a chilly but nice afternoon kind of day. And it's a great day to be outside. Sarah shows us how the wind will impact our area next. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. I'm KSAP meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Today, wind advisory in place around San Antonio. All of these counties in this beige color here under a wind advisory for gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour. Meanwhile, you'll notice there's a red flag warning in effect for counties closer to the Rio Grande. And the reason for this is a red flag warning means high fire danger. It's because these areas have not seen as much rain as we have around San Antonio, and so there's a lot more drier fuel out there so that if any fires start, they would spread rapidly because of the drier conditions and because of those wind gusts. So it is going to be a windy, windy day. Here's a look at the potential wind gusts. Now you can see that by the mid morning hours, by about 9, 10 o'clock, we are going to have a few wind gusts out to the west up to about 50 miles per hour. In San Antonio, the winds are not really going to start picking up until the later morning and early afternoon. Wind gusts in the hill country up to 40 to 50 miles per hour and around San Antonio as well. So in the early afternoon, we could still see a few of those stronger wind gusts. Then by dinner time, wind gusts of about 30 miles per hour are possible. And then in the evening, that's when winds are going to start to calm down, at least temporarily before picking back up again tomorrow. So it is going to be very windy with those gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour. Here's what you can do to prepare. Make sure to secure any lightweight patio furniture. Make sure to secure those lighter trampolines or carports. You also want to avoid any kind of outdoor burning. Now I know I mentioned that San Antonio is not in the red flag warning, but it's still a good idea to avoid any kind of outdoor burning because uh, of those windy conditions. And then just be mindful as you're driving today, particularly on east to west roads of high profile vehicles like trucks and things like that because you get a gust from the north those trucks could start to sway a little bit so just be mindful of that on east to west roads as for your case at 12 hour forecast it is going to be sunny today in spite of the winds it's going to be 60 at 10 65 at noon in the afternoon we'll climb to about 70 degrees for the high and in the evening those winds will subside a little bit we'll get down into the 50s by eight o'clock Take a look at the weather setup across the state. It is fairly quiet, some light rain showers near Texas, near Dallas, but you can see very clearly that upper level low really pulling in some rain from Florida all the way up to parts of Kansas and Nebraska. Behind us, this is why we are so windy. So while one part of the country deals with this low pressure system, California is dealing with an atmospheric river, basically a batch of moisture that that's just going to be sitting over California for two days. Lots of rainfall from Northern California all the way down to Southern California. In fact, some areas nearer to Los Angeles could see up to 10 inches of rainfall. There is a very high risk for flash flooding from uh, Ventura through Los Angeles and Long Beach today and tomorrow as well big part of the country going to be experiencing some flash flooding and potential mudslides. Tonight's the Grammys, by the way, so they're going to be dealing with all of that. Now that low, if it were to have taken a track south towards Texas, we may have gotten another shot at good rain, but that low is actually going to move well to the north of San Antonio. So what could we expect from that low pressure system? Well, just a small shot at rain on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. That's it for us as we take a look at the week cold tomorrow morning in the upper 40s, but nice and comfortable in the afternoon. You're 67. It'll be still breezy tomorrow, just not as windy as today. We'll be looking at temperatures fairly mild this week. Highs near 70 degrees, a chance for isolated rain on Friday and Saturday. 
Coming up in the next half hour, we will take a look at how much rain has fallen in San Antonio this year. It's a good number. Those details coming up after the break. Welcome back. Elon Musk says his startup Neuralink is the latest company to implant a computer chip in a person's brain with hopes of bringing major health benefits into their lives. Neuralink joins a list of companies working on implants with the potential to improve lives and change the way we interact with technology. Researchers say a brain-computer interface will allow a person to use their thoughts to control a device like a computer or a phone. If the technology works, it could one day have a wide range of health benefits. I think this is a case where we definitely want to improve the longevity and the lifespans and the health of everyday people, especially those who have mobility needs. Experts say we are still years away from the device reaching consumers, and some are already having concerns about people's privacy and security. Connecticut is set to become the first state to cancel medical debt for many of its residents. The state will wipe out about $650 million in medical debt for an estimated 250,000 residents this year. The governor says this will provide financial breathing room for many people in a state with a large wealth gap. Residents whose medical debt equals 5% or more of their annual income are eligible. Trending right now on KSAT.com, HEB has landed at the top of the American Customer Satisfaction Index's ratings, tying with Costco with a score of 85. This ends Trader Joe's multi-year streak. They earned a satisfaction score of 84. That's according to a retail and consumer shipping study for 2023-2024. The results are based on interviews with more than 40,000 customers who were asked to grade the nation's largest companies on topics like value, services, staff, convenience, and more. And if you're drinking coffee right now, listen up. The San Antonio Coffee Festival is returning to Travis Park on February 10th. You will be able to try coffee from 35 roasters, and not only from San Antonio and the Hill Country, but also from Louisiana, Washington, and Mexico. We have all the details and ticket information on ksat.com. 824, 53 degrees still ahead. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is searching for these two suspects on your screen, what they are reminding the community about after receiving a disturbance call. Plus, President Joe Biden projected to win the South Carolina primary, the latest in elections in the next half hour. And look at your lotto numbers. Let's take a look. Pick three, four, zero, eight. Fireball three, your daily four, eight, one, two, two. Fireball one, your cash five, four, 24, 28, 29, 30. Your lotto Texas 13, 24, 31, 35, 45, 47. And your Powerball numbers are 9, 11, 27, 59, 66, and Powerball 19, Power Play 3. We'll be back. We want to get to some late breaking news. This is a scene on the 5,000 block of Glen Ridge on the northwest side. San Antonio police investigating after a man was found dead with a gunshot wound inside his car around four this morning. Officers searched the area and found shell casings on the ground. Right now, police are still searching for a suspect. And good morning. Welcome back to GMSA. Sarah, we're seeing a lot of changes these days, including today. The big news is the wind. Yeah, the weather's going to be beautiful as far as like sunny and gorgeous outside, but it is going to be windy. We could see gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour today. No rain in the forecast today, but at least February has been good to us so far. Friday night and Saturday morning, we saw 84 hundredths of an inch of rainfall, which is above the average for the month so far. And when we look at the year, really impressive. More than seven and a half inches of rain since January 1st, which is almost five and a half inches of rain above the average. So we are starting 2024 strong when it comes to the rainfall. Hey, take a look at wind gusts right now. Not too bad. We've got a wind gust of 30 miles per hour near Rock Springs, but things are about to pick up for us through the mid morning hours and early afternoon wind gusts of up to 40 to even up to 50 miles per hour in parts of the hill country. We'll see winds briefly subside this evening before picking back up again tomorrow gusts up to 30 miles per hour possible. So that's the main thing that's uh, what's up with the weather is that it is going to be windy today with those gusts. 
But we are going to have a quiet and pleasant week ahead with chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. I'll show you those temperature trends coming up in just a bit. And we do have a small rain chance next weekend. Plus, we are just over two months away from a total solar eclipse, which is going to carve a path through parts of San Antonio. Details coming up. Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, deputies are searching for the suspects involved in a disturbance and shot fired call. Here's a look at some pictures posted on the BCSO Facebook page. It happened on Bennington Way in a neighborhood near Bulverde Road. People in the area reportedly yelled at the suspects. Then they sped off and that's when shots were fired were heard. Deputies say they found shell casings on the roadway. Call BCSO if you have any information. That number is 210-335-6000. You can also email BCSO tips at bear.org. Now the good news in this case, no one was hurt, but officials say this is a reminder to always stay alert. On their Facebook page, they shared a few important reminders to keep you and your family safe. First, keep your car doors locked. Do not leave valuables in the vehicle. Close garage doors, install a surveillance camera overlooking the vehicles in your driveway. Also, keep your vehicle keys on the nightstand next to you. That way, you can hit the panic button on the key fob if you detect suspicious activity. And if you encounter a suspect, remember they may be armed, so do not confront them. Now we turn to elections. President Joe Biden is projected to win the South Carolina primary. ABC's Mark Rimillard has a look at the first official contest of the Democrats' presidential primary season. In the first official contest of the Democratic presidential primary season, President Biden getting his first victory in South Carolina. Biden posted a video Saturday night on X following his projected win, thanking voters for their support. South Carolina, we did it again. You did it for me again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 2020 and now again in 2024. Now let's go win the whole thing. Let's win it all. The president now has a strong lead over his opponents. Minnesota businessman Representative Dean Phillips and best-selling author Marianne Williamson. As the results were coming in, President Biden dialed into a watch party full of supporters. And we're going to take whatever you did for us and start coming out and run with it. That's right. Well, thanks, everybody. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And you're not rid of me. I'm coming back. <laughs> Black Democrats in the Palmetto State credited with turning around his 2020 campaign after defeats in Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada. Voters in South Carolina expressing concern over numerous issues. The inflation, the cost of living, um, the availability of jobs, like those are some of the biggest things right now. While others feel some of the promises he made during the 2020 campaign have not been kept. Everything from health care reform to police reform, big topic, student loan forgiveness. It's a lot of different topics that are kind of still on the table that are kind of still unresolved. Republicans in South Carolina will vote in their primary on February 24th. Mark Remillard, ABC News, New York. House Republicans are moving forward with a more than $17 billion bill to provide military aid to Israel. It will also replenish U.S. weapons, but it is raising questions for some as the bill leaves out more aid for Ukraine. Meanwhile, a broader Senate compromise is expected to be released this weekend, and a key test vote on the bill will be held this week. Happening today, a massive storm is expected to slam southern and central California. Officials there are warning everyone to get ready. Uh, we're expecting a storm uh, that could bring between five and seven inches of rain here to Long Beach, so it's a lot of rain. They are calling it a monster storm and expecting it to trigger torrential rain, flooding and landslides. Californians spent much of yesterday preparing for the storm. This is the second time this week the state will be pummeled by heavy rain. It's Black History Month and you will notice events happening all around town. This morning we wanted to let you know about a few of them. First up, beginning Thursday, you can check out the play A Raisin in the Sun. It will come to life at the Public Theater of San Antonio on West Ashby. It tells the story of a black family living in Chicago in the 1950s and dives into their dreams, struggles, and perseverance. The performances will run through February 25th. Also happening Thursday, the 9th Annual Black History for Children book exhibit the goal is to promote literacy and study of black history. The exhibit will offer black history books for children, provide a recommended reading list on black history, share information to improve children's reading skills and offer some reading time with a special guest. There will also be a free black history book giveaway. 
Also on Thursday, you can check out a one-of-a-kind Black History River tour along the Riverwalk. It will start at La Villita and explore African-American influence in San Antonio. The 100-minute cruise will explore Black history all along the Riverwalk. Finally, there is a lot happening at the Carver Library on East Commerce. There will be a breakfast lecture Thursday morning at 10 featuring Dr. Charles Gentry with the Office of Historic Preservation for the City of San Antonio. The pres presentation will focus on some of the early black business leaders whose drive and entrepreneurial spirit helped to build the economic foundation of a thriving African-American community in San Antonio. And if you missed any of this information, don't worry, we have you covered. We have a full list of events on our website. Just head to ksat.com and look for this story. And while you're on our website, check out the other great stories we have for Black History Month. And San Antonio Animal Care Services is start, starting a new program that will help pet owners take care of their furry friends. With the help from Spay Neuter Network, this truck will cut down on the hassle pet owners face when getting their pet spayed or neutered. Here's how it works. The truck will park at a community center or park in your neighborhood. You drop your pet off. They can get taken to the clinic to be spayed or neutered, and they're reunited at the same spot later that afternoon. We know that getting across town can be prohibitive to people getting their pets spayed and neutered, and we want to help them out through our transport program. It is basically like a bus transport for your pets to come to our clinic for the services. Owners won't need to worry. The truck is air conditioned and has heat too. The goal is to get the program fully functioning sometime in March. 837, 54 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam. It's going to be a sunny Sunday. Now the big story is the wind. Sarah has more on that after the break. A total solar eclipse is coming soon and people are making plans on where they will be, including UTSA students and staff. A UTSA professor of astrophysics explains the importance of wearing solar eclipse glasses during this big event. On April 8th of this year, the path of a rare total solar eclipse will pass through Texas, including parts of San Antonio and the Hill Country. During a total solar eclipse, the entire sun is covered for several minutes, making it appear dark outside. UTSA is working with city leaders to host an event for the public and are finalizing their plans. UTSA professor of astrophysics Chris Packham says when viewing the eclipse, keep yourself safe and enjoy the view by wearing solar eclipse glasses. These glasses block out most of the energy of the sun and allow you to see the eclipse safely. So when we're in the phases before totality, you must be using this and indeed after totality. Well, this incredibly exciting time, not, not just for me personally, but also for really central Texas in, in general. I've, I've had friends of mine from uh, Del Rio all the way to uh, Fort Worth tell me about uh, how excited they are to, for, for this opportunity to see the eclipse. And remember, KSAT 12 is your Eclipse Authority. We will have complete coverage. And Sarah, I know you're yes. so excited about this. We are pumped. I mean, it is exceptionally rare to be in the path of an annular solar eclipse, which happened last October, and a total solar eclipse, which is happening on April 8th. We are right smack dab in the middle of it, and we are counting down the days to the total solar eclipse. The total solar eclipse will happen 64 days from today on April 8th around 1.30 p.m. And again, as Tiffany mentioned, this one will, different because, will be different than last October's eclipse because the moon will totally block out the sun. Actually, during totality, you can take off your glasses and look because it's going to be dark like the evening. Now, here is the path of totality. The path of totality is not going to go through all of San Antonio, but it's going to be close. It's going to go from Eagle Pass all the way up toward the Dallas Fort Worth area. The blue line here is the most amount of time in totality, but everybody inside of the red will be in totality. That includes Uvalde, Brackettville, Rock Springs, Lakey, Bandera, Kerrville, Comfort. For Bernie, Blanco, Dripping Springs, Austin, Canyon Lake, La Prior, and yes, parts of San Antonio will be in the path of totality. The west and northwest side of San Antonio. We can get a closer view here. So areas like the Rim, Stone Oak, Timberwood Park, Scenic Oaks, 
Leon Springs, Lotus, SeaWorld, Leon Valley, even parts of Lackland Air Force Base going to be in totality. Uh, and if you are not in the path of totality, you'll still see a partial eclipse. It'll be close, but you could also just take a short trip up to the north and to the west, and you would be able to be in the path of totality. All right, that's April 8th. Let's talk about today, though. We've got a wind advisory in place around San Antonio today. Anywhere in the beige here is a, is a wind advisory is in place until 6 p.m. That's because winds could gust up to 40 to 50 miles per hour. You'll notice that there's a red flag warning out to the west for areas like Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Catula, and Laredo. Red flag warning means high fire danger. Now, fire danger is higher for these counties in the pink because they have not received as much rain as we have seen in San Antonio. And so the... Uh, fuels, the grasses are much drier out there. So be very careful today. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Early this morning, we're just going to see a few wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. But by about 10, 11 noon, that's when winds are going to gust at 40 to 50 miles per hour. Temperatures are going to be in the 60s. Around noon, it'll be 65 degrees. We're going to uh, continue to have those gusty winds in the afternoon, but by the evening, winds will calm a little bit. We're looking at a high temperature right around 69, 70 degrees today for the high. It'll be 66 in Rock Springs, 66 in Kerrville, 75 in Del Rio, 73 in Beeville, 69 in Gonzales, 68 in Canyon Lake, 68 in Holota, 69 in Seguin, 73 in Divine, and 75 in Pleasanton. As we take a look at the weather setup across the nation, a lot of rain for parts of Nebraska all the way down to Florida. This is around the low. We're on the dry side of this low. That's why it's going to be windy here, though, because this is a very wound up system. You can see the general circulation goes for miles and miles around this low. That's why we're going to be windy today. But out to the west, California walloped by rounds and rounds of rainfall here. This is going to be a two day long storm for parts of California. Lots of snow, which is their water source in the summer and Honestly, lots of rainfall too. We're going to see up to 10 inches of rain in parts of Los Angeles, all because of this low. This would be promising for us for rain if it was headed in our direction. Unfortunately, it's going to really stay out west of Texas and then before it moves into Texas, take a big old jump up to the north. And so here in San Antonio, our rain chances are very slim in the week ahead. At least we got some good rain Friday. In San Antonio, our rain chances stand at only about 10 to 20% Thursday through Saturday. Otherwise, yes, it is going to be windy and sunny today. Tomorrow, 48 in the morning as you're getting ready to head back to school, head back to work. Know that it's going to be comfortable, though, in the afternoon with highs in the upper 60s. And we're going to take that forecast and pretty much paste it through Wednesday. Cold, chilly mornings, rather, and comfortable afternoons. And then we'll have a small chance for isolated rain pretty much Thursday through Saturday of our forecast. So not a big chance for rain, but at least it gives us an opportunity to dry out, maybe do some yard work, get some things done outdoors. Tiffany, you were saying your daughter, she loves to play in the mud yes. outside. Well, hopefully we'll get uh, that to not be so muddy in the coming days. Oh no, the muddier the better. The muddier, yeah. <laughs> Just turn on the hose then. Again. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sarah. Uh -huh. Time now, 847, 55 degrees. Talk about a nightmare vacation. A man from San Antonio says his girlfriend almost died after being drugged in Mexico City. Right now, Anthony Grisby and his girlfriend, Rachel Villarreal, are still in Mexico City. Anthony says someone put drugs in their drinks while they were out sightseeing. Rachel has been in the hospital since January 16th, and Anthony says they can't return home until Rachel is well enough. I just want people to be aware that these things happen and that they need to take a lot of extra precaution when they are traveling out of the country. Unfortunately, this kind of thing has happened to other tourists. Tune in for the full story tomorrow on The Night Beat. Hi, I'm Franklin. I've lived in a lot of different places. My family is always on the move. This was it, our new town. Do you want to <laughs> Excuse me, making new friends can be hard. I'm Franklin Armstrong. My name is Charlie Brown.
It's Franklin's time to shine in the new Peanuts Apple TV Plus special. Snoopy Presents Welcome Home Franklin takes you on an adventure following the life of Franklin, one of the main characters in the original series. Franklin's family is always on the move with his dad's military job, and he forms a bond with Charlie Brown, and they work together to build the car. It is set to premiere on February 16th. And it's going to be a party in the USA tonight as Miley Cyrus is expected to perform at the Grammy Awards show. Variety says Cyrus is set to perform her hit song, Flowers. She is nominated for six awards, including Song of the Year, Record of the Year, and Album of the Year. Other performers include Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo, Tracy Chapman, and Luke Combs. And the Embassy of Japan in the U.S. assures Taylor Swift fans that she can get from Tokyo to the Super Bowl in time. Taylor Swift is holding concerts in Japan through February 10th. The embassy says despite the 12-hour flight and 17-hour time difference, it is confident Swift would comfortably arrive in Las Vegas before the game end begins. Swift kicked off her era's tour last year in the U.S. The tour resumed this year with concerts starting in Japan. Well, if you're looking for something fun to do, check out uh, these events with the family today. The Magic Theater presents... Don't let the pigeon drive the bus, the musical. The musical will be shown through March 17th. The play is based on Mo Williams', Williams book about a pigeon who sees his chance to drive a bus after the bus driver has a crisis that threatens to make her passengers late. Tickets cost $25 for adults and $20 for children ages 3 through 17. We have a list of show times and more information on ksat.com. And San Antonio's Nelson Wolf Stadium is now a temporary home to a massive bounce park. Epic Bounce Park is open on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays through March 24th. The hours are from 3 to 6 p.m. on Fridays and 10 to 6 p.m. on the weekends. You can purchase tickets for two-hour sessions at $26 each, and season passes start at $48. To learn more about the pricing, just head to ksat.com. Okay, so I just got the email with the pollen count, so I haven't been able to update it on the graphics yet, but I want to give you that. Molds are low at 390. That's good because yesterday they were high. Mountain cedar, however, has climbed. It's at 580 and is high. It is still cedar season. Cedar season comes to an end usually around mid-January, so just a couple more weeks to go, but I bet today's winds are not going to help too much. Wind advisory in a place around San Antonio. Red flag warning out west where fire danger is high. You can see that winds are starting to pick up. This is a look at the current wind gusts. We're seeing wind gusts around San Antonio of up to 31 miles per hour in Helotus. But today we will see wind gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour from about the mid-morning through the early afternoon. It is going to be sunny, however, with a high temperature near 70 degrees. And tonight, temperatures are going to cool into the 50s. Tomorrow morning, we'll be at 48 in the early morning hours. But by the afternoon, it'll be 67. Chilly mornings Tuesday and Wednesday with comfortable afternoons. Some clouds work their way back into the forecast Wednesday through the weekend. And speaking of the weekend, there is a small opportunity for rain Thursday through Saturday. But again, no big rainmakers in the forecast at the moment. Hopefully that'll change because we need to stock up on the rain before the summer months arrive, Tiffany, and we've oh. been good so far. I mean, this this year we've seen a lot of rainfall. We have. It's been a roller coaster already. It has. My grass is totally dead because of the freeze uh, that we experienced in mid-January followed by a lot of the rain. So it is what it is. It'll come back briefly for a couple weeks before the dry summer months, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Today is going to be beautiful, though. Yeah, thanks for being with us, Tim. Yes, it's, it's been fun. fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone. Enjoy the sunshine and hold on your hats because of the wind.